Eleanor. I'm trying to get into my laptop right here to try and pick up a turn or a two-day trip, but Eleanor just plopped herself down. Yes, you. <laughs> and she's like, no, Dad, you're going to stay home. You're going to scratch my butt. You're going to scratch my butt. Look, yeah, yeah. There's my baby. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. It's raining. It's sprinkling here pretty steadily. Uh, and I am, uh, I just found a parking spot in the green, in the red section near 2G. I'm just reminding myself where I park because I don't want to lose my car. It's raining a little hard, so I will see you at the airport. All right, so, hey guys. Got to the airport, checked in. Uh, I'm flying lead on this trip. Um, our position B is this his second trip. He just graduated in June. Very exciting. Um, so we checked in. We saw that our plane was, our flight was going to be delayed. So uh, the airport is packed with people. So rather than sit in the crew room, which is packed, I guess there are other delays, uh, and the airport is just packed, packed, packed. So we figured we'll just wait on the plane. It's 86 degrees on the plane. <laughs> And I uh, talked to the gate agent. She said, right now we don't have a captain or a first officer and that we're delaying boarding for at least an hour until we find out if we have a flight crew. <sighs> it's all right. It's gonna cut into our layover, but we have 24 hours in Indianapolis and there's nothing to do in Indianapolis. So no worries, no concerns, no problems. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. All right, I was literally just walking down to the jet bridge to see if we had any information. And then I saw our flight crew walking into the jet bridge. So it is now 10.56. We were supposed to be halfway there by now, but uh, we have a flight crew. They're walking down the jet bridge now. Yay. All right, so I'll see you next in Indianapolis. Hey guys, hi, welcome to Indianapolis. Uh, it is about 20 minutes of seven. We arrived about an hour late, which is better than it could have been since we were delayed originally by more than an hour and a half, if not, that's a very close airplane. Um, we have a long layover, there's nothing to do here, so um, where our hotel is at least. So I'm gonna just <clears throat> hang out, watch some YouTube, play video game, eat responsibly. If you have not seen my video that I just posted today about my weight, it's horrific and I need to do something about it. So I tried to pack some rational uh, eats for this trip. Um, most of the stuff I had frozen was from um, meal prep that I made before this decision to lose weight. So I still have some pretty high carb meals in my bag, but I'm not gonna throw the food away. Is that our shuttle? Is that our shuttle? Please be our shuttle. Yay, it's our shuttle. I'll see you at the hotel. All right, so you know I'm always saying, well, I'm not doing a room tour because the rooms are all the same. Well, that's kind of true, but this is kind of a cute room, so I'm doing a room tour. Hmm. <laughs> this is the bathroom. It's kind of cute. I like the little shelves. There's a running theme with shelves in this room. It's nice. Um, this nice quartz countertop here. I like it. And then shelves. This is a little shelf with um, the coffee stuff, coffee station. I like it. It's a cute little thing. Little uh, desk, which is very nice. Two beds. We all know how much I care about two beds, but they look very comfortable uh, and um, it's an adjoining room unfortunately but look at this lush view oh my god how gorgeous is this right 100 percent flood attendant hotel room view and you can see the sun is rising which means i am going to bed i'm going to have a little uh finish my protein drink and then i'm going to jump in that bed pass out for a good eight, 10 hours, I don't know, however long I can sleep on 10 milligrams of melatonin, you know, I'll be sleeping nice and hard soon. All right, so I will see you later on this afternoon. 
Hey guys, how are you? So, I'm on my layover here in Indianapolis, or wherever this is. This can't be Indianapolis, because this is, it's almost surreal. Our hotel is surrounded by other hotels, which is surrounded, in turn, by a larger industrial park. There's nothing here. We're probably 15 minutes from the airport. You can hear a plane just flew overhead just now. It is absolutely, no there's nothing here. Not a CVS, a gas station. Hold on, that truck was so loud. There's not even a gas station or a CVS, anything around here. But, but, silver lining, it's a beautiful day. Hardly a cloud in the sky. And it's a perfect day to take a walk because if you haven't watched my video about how heavy I've gotten, um, I need to get more active. So. I realized that I had been in my hotel room since, I don't know, seven or eight this morning. Uh, it is almost 5.30. I've been sitting or sleeping or eating that entire time. Uh, so I figured it's time to go for a walk, get some steps in, hopefully lose a couple fat cells. And I thought, well, I'll take a look, a look around the neighborhood yeah, I've been walking for about a half hour now. I'm gonna head back to the hotel in a minute. There you go, this is my exciting layover in Indianapolis. Not a layover I'll go for again, although sometimes a relaxing layover, one that forces you to do nothing, can be nice. But I'm already over it. Hey guys, good evening. So it's about 9.05 in the evening. I have to wake up at 4 a.m. for a five o'clock shuttle to the airport. I just took a five milligram tablet of melatonin to hopefully kind of nudge me to sleep, uh, but not so much as to leave me groggy in the morning, so there's that. Um, today's layover was at best relaxing, uh, at worst boring, really boring. Um, so I ate fairly well, um, some meals, it was the meat sauce with some pasta that I had that I made last week, I had frozen. Um, it's a meal I probably won't eat again in the near future because it was just way too many, uh, too much pasta, um, but for my goal, uh, but it was frozen, I already had it. I wasn't gonna throw it away, so I ate it today. Um, what else did I do? Watched a lot of YouTube. I watched a lot of YouTube, and you know, I've mentioned her probably a couple times in the past a uh, week or two is uh, Cloud Surfer Andy. She's a South African flight attendant. I am obsessed with her channel. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with her channel. Uh, maybe it's just, it's just that I'm envious of her. I'm just so jealous of her. Um, she's always so clever and so thoughtful. It just makes me, uh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> She started an Etsy um, Etsy shop, and I'm just so jealous. I wish I had the, I don't know, the, the drive to do something like that. I don't even know what I would put on there. Uh, but um, she has an Etsy channel that I just went and bought a, a t-shirt and a sticker. Um, the sticker will go on my water bottle, which I hope to carry with me more often so I can stay hydrated. Uh, and the t-shirt I just thought was stinking cute. I'll have to show it to you. But if you want a preview of it, Go check out her Etsy shop. It's so cute. Now, I wrote it down because um, it's Winglet Travel Merch. Uh, I'll try to remember to put it in my um, my description box. But Winglet Travel Merch. A winglet, as she described in her video, and I knew already as a flight attendant, a winglet is at the very end of a wing. The bottom is kind of tipped up. It, it has like a little, a little, um, like a shark fin almost. Uh, or a little winglet at the end to help with stabilization, fuel efficiency, and uh, a stabilized, fuel efficient aircraft has good lift, and it's just, you know, it's it's all good. And um, I just love the fact that she chose winglet as part of her um, Etsy brand name, because, uh, you know, she's a stabilizing a force that's trying to create lift for people around her and I just think it's so clever. I'm so jealous uh, But um, I I ordered a t-shirt and a sticker. Um, I was a little anxious about shipping 
because she's in South Africa, uh, but it is being done through a print, uh, some other process. I think the t-shirt the itself is actually going to be made here in the States, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, shipping was $4. Ta-da! So um, if you haven't watched her channel, go check out her channel. She has a discount code which is on her channel. I'm not going to leave it on my channel. You have to go check out her video first. Watch the advertisements. Um, but uh, winglet travel merch on Etsy. And I'm just so jealous of her. Oh my God. Um, let's see. I am finally recovering from yesterday's visit to the gym. I was barely able to stretch my arm out completely because my bicep here really hurt it was like almost the pain that i had when i got my vaccination it was substantial i mean i oh, man i really did something uh good hopefully but um it's just now starting to sort of feel normal it still aches but wow man it, it was hurting yesterday uh and this morning but um blah 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 i'm just rambling the layover was nice i i will will never pick this trip up on purpose for the layover unless I need like a vacation from everything and I'm forced to just like lay in bed and like watch YouTube. <laughs> so if I need a little getaway, which I don't, my life is virtually free of stress. Um, I'll come back to Indianapolis, but I think this might be one of my last layovers here. <gasps> so boring. All right. So I'm going to get to bed, uh, hopefully get a good night's sleep so I can work tomorrow. Tomorrow we've got three legs. It's going to be a fairly long day. Again, I have no idea where we're, we're going to end up in Tampa. I know that for sure. Uh, but, um, I don't know where I'm going before that. So I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, how are you? So, um, we had a 5 40 AM show here at the airport. We took the 5 AM shuttle. Um, we had all noticed on our schedule that the flight had been delayed but we weren't contacted. Uh, and when uh, you contact crew scheduling is entirely up to the situation, but we all figured we're just gonna wait and see what crew scheduling does or says. So we kept looking at our schedule and then the trip was, the flight was delayed to like 10 o'clock or something like that. And then back to eight o'clock. And then it's, now it's 9.34, I don't know. But uh, we're waiting for crew scheduling to contact us to let us know what's going on. Clearly, they're trying to resolve some sort of situation. So it's not in our control. And they're clearly not doing it on purpose. So what do you do, right? You just sit here, relax. It's a nice airport. I've got a great crew. There's a cute bookstore here. So I might go browse there for a few minutes. The line at Starbucks is insane. So that's not happening. But uh, yeah, there you go. So we're gonna hang out here in Indianapolis for a little while. They're delaying our flights. We're supposed to fly from here to Orlando and then Orlando somewhere. <laughs> and then we're supposed to end up in Tampa tonight. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, any race car aficionados? There's a Athel Romeo from 1938, if you're into cars. That's not me, but you know, I'm in Indianapolis. Hey guys, hi. So it's 7.30 in the morning. We have two hours left before we take off. Um, went to Starbucks to get an, uh, a latte because it's freezing in this airport right now. Uh, and I need the caffeine. They with this, this uh, there was a little family in line in front of me and uh they turned and saw me in my uniform and said hey you know you work for xyz you know airlines any idea why our planes delayed and they're nice they're they're fine they weren't being upset or rude but uh i said i said you know i'm so sorry we're your crew so you're not gonna be waiting on us and and we had a chat about what could have been the problem and uh this is their first time flying my airline and uh I felt sort of bad because of the delay and all that, and they were very, very sleepy, and uh, we all agreed we'd rather be in bed than standing here at the airport. But so I, I uh, they ordered a cup of tea and like a piece of pound cake or something. So I was like, I asked the barista, I said, hey, I'm gonna take care of that for them. I had two gift cards, so 
it's not like cash out of my pocket. And uh, they, the, the little family said, no, 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 no. I said, listen, either you let me pay or you're not getting on the airplane. <laughs> we all had, we all had a laugh. And so uh, this is, like I said, I think this is their first time flying my airline. So it's a nice little, hopefully a nice gesture, but uh, yeah, blah, blah. Well, I think that might be our flight crew. We'll all be waiting together. All right, so this has been a very interesting and long, tedious morning. It is now 8.54 in the morning. We're still here in Indianapolis. Um, the flight from the plane that we're supposed to fly from uh, here to Orlando was coming in from Las Vegas. Uh, I don't know which flight didn't have a functional crew, like uh, a, a flight crew or something. There was something about not having a crew that the Orlando flight was canceled. And I'm I, again, anything could be happening. These kinds of things don't just happen to my airline. Uh, but um, yeah, so the Orlando flight was canceled. Very upsetting, because I feel bad. I feel bad for these passengers, because some of them were sitting here since four o'clock in the morning. But uh, now it looks like we might even be ferrying a flight to Tampa. So we're not gonna have to work the two legs today. Uh, we're either deadheading, but I think we might be ferry, uh, ferrying a flight, which means we'll be flying, but there'll be no passengers on board. So that'd be interesting. Uh, it'll be my first time ferrying a flight, so I'd be super excited. But again, that excitement is tempered by the fact that I feel really, really bad for those passengers who are being, uh, you know, disrupted, but that's what's going on. I will find out more and tell you all about it later on. All right, so this isn't terribly exciting. <laughs> I kind of wish we had passengers on board because that would give me something to do other than read. But uh, it is novel to be flying. Uh, the flight deck door is open right now, so we don't have to you know, practice our security measures when the pilots want to step out and go to the bathroom. But yeah, we are up in the air. Fun, fun, fun. Hey guys, hi. So I made it to my hotel room here in Tampa. What a long day. Although it's only 1235. It, it feels like we've been on the move. And we have actually since, you know, wicked early in the morning. What a wonderful day, sad day as well, because I feel horrible for those guests that were on that flight that was canceled from Orla from Indianapolis to Orlando. I told you I, I met that little family at that Starbucks and they were very excited to go to Orlando on vacation. And of course the flight was canceled. They had been there since 4 a.m. So I felt really, really bad for them. I really, really did. Um, we ha were scheduled a very long day with three crazy legs. Uh, but then of course that turned into a ferry flight instead. A ferry flight is just when the company needs to reposition one plane from one airport to another. Uh, the flight crew obviously necessary. Cabin crew is probably only there for some safety needs in terms of arming, disarming the door. Um, uh, being there in case there's some sort of structural issue, I guess, on the plane, or if the flight crew, one of them were for some reason incapacitated, or I don't know, but there's not a lot of need for us on the plane during a ferry flight, but I'm sure there are situations where we'd be important. But, um, but otherwise, we just kind of sat there. I dozed for a few minutes. I did close my eyes for a bit. Um, and as we're approaching the uh, Tampa area, I think we were probably about to make our initial descent or were making our initial descent. Uh, the captain had left the, um, the flight deck door open for a bit and uh, he invited me up to, uh, to look out the windows, out the, um, the front windows of the flight deck as we're approaching uh, our initial descent. And it was just the most magical thing. It was beyond beyond words it was so cool the clouds were gorgeous i couldn't film it because it was just it just it wouldn't have been legal i don't think to film it uh, i wish i could because i wish i could have brought you with me if you uh if you're old enough to remember the old superman movies with christopher reeves when he's flying through the sky and the clouds and he turns 
like this and the whole world just tilted. <gasps> it was magical. It was magical. Of course, I had to go back to my seat as we got too close because, you know, it was, it would have been dangerous to be up and about in the cabin without my seatbelt. But, oh, I just felt so lucky to get the chance to, um, to, to see that out that, that front window. Um, yeah, what a wonderful thing. The only thing on par with that was when we were doing flight deck procedure, when I have to go into, well, a flight attendant, when I went into the flight deck to allow one of the uh, flight deck officers to go to the restroom, another person has to go into the flight deck, and that was me this time. It was pitch black, super clear night. We were approaching Las Vegas uh, with Phoenix off to our left, and the sky was crystal clear. And I happened to look off to the left, looking out the windows, because you do, as when you're up there, you're like, oh God, look, look, at the, look at the ground and the skies and the stars. Well, I happened to look off to the left and the Milky Way spilled across the sky. It was just glorious. And you see pictures of the Milky Way, uh, but to see it from thousands of feet up in the air, away from all uh, light pollution, to see the Milky Way just sprinkled across the sky was just dazzling. And until today, that was the most amazing thing I've seen outside of a, 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 a plane. Uh, although the Grand Canyon is something special to see as well. I've seen the Grand Canyon from up there as well. Uh, and I've seen the Behringer Crater. That was also very interesting, although it's pretty small from up in the sky. But it was just a really wonderful experience. So I, you know, scuttled back to my seat uh, for landing, and um, it was just a very exciting thing. I was super, super pleased to have that opportunity. Uh, our flight deck crew was great. Um, and uh, yeah, so now we're in Tampa. Our layover here is about five hours longer than it was supposed to be. Um, our showtime is 5.30, so I think we're taking the 5 o'clock shuttle, so it's, it's really super close to the airport, and they drop us past security, so, <sighs> yeah, super excited. Now, I'm going to settle in and eat something, because um, for breakfast, I did not pack food for breakfast. I had a uh, Egg McMuffin. <laughs> Don't yell at me. I had an Egg McMuffin for breakfast. Uh, from McDonald's and a, and uh, an orange juice, but uh, I'm gonna eat some lunch uh, and then probably take a nap. I'm kind of tired, uh, but I do want to show you my view outside the window. It's a lot better than my Indianapolis uh, layover view. So the the room here's a little room tour. I am wearing my pants for a change, as you can see. Sometimes I do wear my pants, um, but <laughs> this is my view outside. Oop. That's my view outside the window. A lot better than my Indianapolis layover. Isn't it a beautiful day? It's a little hot. It's a little hot. I was tempted to think about going over to Bush Gardens um, because it's so early in the day. But we have a very early show time and it's super hot outside. So I'm going to stick around the hotel room, eat my food, take a nap, and then jump on uh, YouTube and see what um, other people are doing. Hey guys, how are you? I'm still in Tampa, as you can probably tell by the background here. I decided I have a 17 hour layover here. Uh, it's too hot, too humid, and I don't want to spend the money to go all the way over to Bush Gardens for like four hours, since I, especially since I have a very early morning show tomorrow. So I have a 17 hour layover in Tampa with nothing to do except for sit on my butt, lay in bed, or watch YouTube videos. And with my new journey into being mindful about my health, I figured, let's get out and walk around, right? Well, it's very humid, very humid. It's pretty hot for, for Tampa, but super humid. And uh, so I'm walking around and I realized like this shirt is starting to cling to my curves. I've got, you can't see, but I've got two little smiley faces under my boobs here because uh, it's, it's kind of sweaty out there. Not pretty, uh, but no one's looking at me anyway. Uh, I did find a Whole Foods. 
and I decided to walk in there because there wasn't really much else around. Walked into Whole Foods. Uh, I haven't been in a Whole Foods in probably 20 years, if not longer. Um, boy, they've changed, and uh, it was very nice, kind of expensive. Uh, but I bought myself a bottle of Zephyr Hills, which is a water I really like, and um, I decided to pick up some uh, cold food that I can eat on the plane tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna, be, we're gonna fly from uh, Tampa to Vegas, and then we have a Sacramento turn. So I figured I would get some kind of cold food uh, that I could eat on the airplane without having to heat it up. And I saw this little curry, curry chicken with, um, it's just curry, some shredded uh, carrots and some raisins, and some um, grilled broccoli. And I think that's like a sensible meal and it looks like something I could easily recreate cheaply so I'm gonna try this um, at home there's the only carbs in here would be the carrots well I don't know does broccoli have a lot of carbs I don't know and whatever is in the sauce I and mean, it seems like a sensible meal um, this is the only container they uh, had at Whole Foods it's the only do you see the size of this container they wouldn't offer a smaller one, so I had to get this giant thing. If I had filled this, it would have cost me 30 bucks, I swear. Uh, but um, I had some, I practiced some restraint and got like two handfuls of food. I think that's a sensible, sensible meal. And a little bit of resentment to end this little clip here uh, that passed by a gas station. The gas here at a mobile is $2.89. Holy crap. For regular that same gas in vegas right now is over four dollars it's 410 or something like that right now it's insane whatever um i love to have that problem isn't it nice to worry about gas prices i love having a car um and lastly before i let you go <clears throat> this video is all over the place i was walking back into the uh hotel and i saw like two crews getting off of the shuttle and um, I was like, hey guys, you know, how, how's your day? How's it been affected by the kind of, you know, little meltdown? And no one experienced any problems. I guess they're all coming in from San Juan or something. But uh, one of them, and I wish I remembered her name, her screen name, Diva Lights, something like that. If you're watching, leave a comment. Remind me of uh, your, your name there. But she was like, oh my God, Steven. And when someone goes, oh my God, Steven, I'm like, oh, there's a moment that flashes right across my brain going, oh, do I know you? <laughs> or is this a YouTube thing, you know? Uh, but she, she said I, she got her job because of me, which is utterly flattering because I am I am not the person who got you anything. Uh, you all, if, you, if I helped you at all, you did all the work. You did all the heavy lifting. But it was really exciting to meet her. She wanted a picture with me. And I, I always think that's kind of funny because who wants a picture with me, especially looking like this, right? Blah, blah, blah. I will see you guys probably tomorrow. All right, bye. Hey guys, how are you? So, good morning. It is day four, go home day. Um, our show time this morning was 5.30. It's now about 5.40 in the morning. Uh, so the three of us, A, B, and C, are on the plane, hanging out, waiting for our chaser. Now, apparently she was used real hard yesterday. <laughs> And they moved her around and did all sorts of horrible things. And, um, you know, that's what we do. We're flight attendants. We're, we're at the will of the company. Well, I don't think she had minimum rest, honestly. I, one of my coworkers saw her um, last, last night, late last night, saying she just got in. So our belief, we don't know yet, is that she did not receive minimum rest and is now receiving some minimum rest. Um... No one's let us know where she is or if we have a replacement for her or if there's a delay. Nothing showing up, our, showing up on our schedule. So it's it's a little bit of a guessing game. This is one of the reasons you really have to develop patience as a flight attendant because frequently things like this happen and they're completely beyond your control. Whatever. The only thing I had to... Uh, I had to uh, talk to our gate agent. He was about to make an announcement to the gate area letting them know that we're waiting for a crew member and that's why we're being delayed and i was all over him like uh yeah i was all over him right away saying please do not make that kind of announcement because the minute you make the announcement saying 
hi guys, you're you're late today because we're waiting for a crew member. The passengers don't know that it's not her fault. They just think she's late for work and they'll just not be very pleasant. So I asked them not to make that announcement because that would have been unfair. So we'll see what happens. All right, three UMs, one wheelchair, four hours and 14 minutes to Vegas if we go. All right, so we're in Las Vegas now. Our chaser did show up. She actually took an earlier shuttle than she had to, mostly because she wanted to get home like we do. So um, very happy to have her. She's amazing. Um, that flight was pretty easy. We really didn't have any problems, um, really to speak of. A couple of mask issues, but not even that. Uh, now we have to do the victory lap to Sandy. Sacramento, yeah, Sacramento, and then back to Vegas. Uh, we should hopefully get home a little early. It's I think the flight is blocked, oh, blocked at 1:20 or one and a half hours, but it's only going to take us an hour and two minutes to get to Sacramento. So hopefully it's the same on the way back, and we'll be home early because I could use it. Oh, oh my God. I'm so tired, so tired. Uh, the only time I can sleep on an aircraft is if I'm sitting in the jump seat. That's when I really want to go to sleep. Oh my God, so tired. Uh, that flight was one hour and two minutes from Vegas to Sacramento. We were completely, completely, completely full. We're gonna be completely full again uh, on the way back, an hour and two minutes as well. And then we'll be done. We'll be done with this trip. I'm very excited. I have four days off. I have no plans except for laundry, grocery shopping, and cats. Yes. Uh, so that's it. That's it. So um, I will see you in Las Vegas. Hey guys. Hi. So I'm back in Las Vegas. And I'll promise you there is nothing more satisfying than getting my bags, throwing them in the back of a car, and just getting ready to go home. Nothing more satisfying. Um, maybe being picked up by somebody would be more satisfying, but, but I'm happy with my car. Um, today, the last leg of this trip was one hour and two minutes at the exact same time as my trip out to uh, Sacramento. Uh, again, we were completely full, completely packed. Um, really nice day. Really great passengers. Really super passengers. We had um, three UMs on one leg. We had one on the other. Um, we had uh, just a really nice, a lot of really nice people today. A lot of beautiful kids. Um, uh, I did not get a lot of sleep last night. Um, I received three different Facebook messages and my phone gets a notification, but my watch also says, hey, you've got a, a message. I'm sure there's a setting I could turn on for nighttime to not get those messages, but I don't know. Um, I, I don't want to not receive notifications, but um, they woke me up each time. It's it's the same vibration as my alarm. So I'm like, oh, 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 get, you know, oh, no, that's not an alarm. I'll go back to sleep. Um, I'm also super hungry. I ate a yogurt, I think. Is that all I had for breakfast? And then I had that chicken I bought at uh, Trader Joe's yesterday, and that was not a lot of food. So, um, I do not have any groceries at the house, so I'm gonna end up going through a drive-through. I just have to try and think of what I can get that's not like insane, like just a burger and no fries or something, you know. Um, I'm gonna go home, uh, say hi to the cats, give them some treats, take a nap because I am delirious, in fact, I should probably eat something out of my lunch bag now because I really am kind of fading in and out. I don't want to drive like hungry, you know, not good. Um, and then uh, I'm going to hit the gym later on today because I want to make a habit of going uh, as often as I can when I'm home. But um, I think that's it. That's the rest of my, my trip. Uh, it has been crazy, crazy. Uh, with the delay, everything was delayed. Every single day was delayed. Um, the cancellations, the, the ferry flight, the highlight of the month, if not longer. But it's just been a crazy trip. Um, I had a good solid crew, though, so no complaints. Really good crew. Um, 
yeah, it was all good. It was all good. I'm just really glad to be home. I'm off for four days now. <sighs> Thank God. Um, so there you go. I will see you in the next video. All right. Thanks a lot for coming with me and fly safe. Bye. Before leaving the parking lot, I may or may not have given those four pigeons a package of rice from my lunch bag. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, the poor things. They're starving. <laughs>